Hello, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be reading three February 2024 new releases to tell you what I think you should pick up. But before I do that, I wanted to take a second to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Parade. So Parade makes my favorite underwear, and around the new year, I don't know about you, but I am always itching to kind of refresh my life in all aspects, especially the underwear drawer, which I feel like for a lot of us is often neglected with ratty old underwear, especially at this phase in my life when I am going through a bunch of hard things. I really just need my underwear drawer to be beautiful, comforting, and make me feel good in a present moment. As y'all may or may not know, I'm currently going through IVF and my body is just constantly fluctuating. Having clothes and underwear in my drawers that make me feel the best in any given moment, it, it's just so important to me. So I hopped onto Parade's website and picked out a few things that I was really excited about and I branched out this time, which is like so unlike me. I am a black underwear, bras, panties, whatever, through and through kind of person, but the Betsy Johnson collab that Parade has right now, I couldn't pass up the cute patterns and uh, I got a couple of pieces. I think might be my favorite pieces from Parade yet. So I picked up two of the triangle bralettes and their high-rise thongs, and when I tried them on, I was blown away. I feel like oftentimes when you like look at a website, you can't really tell, even if they have the best models ever, how something is going to fit and feel on you. And when I received these bralettes and panties in the mail, I was blown away. I have not tried out their new cotton fabric until this moment, and I am completely regretting that because this fabric is so deliciously soft. It's stretchy, it's breathable, it's comfortable. Their new cotton fabric, by the way, I think is made out of recycled cotton and tensile lyocell, which is a lot less uh, water intensive than just like a traditional cotton, which I really love. Gotta love sustainability. I really love how wide the straps are. I'm actually wearing like high ball and rose patterned one today, and they have a thicker strap than they would on uh, the bralettes for smaller chested people. They have adjustable straps, which I love, and I might be making a bold claim here, but uh, these bras don't have underwire or padding. I feel like the girls are sitting extremely pretty today. I love having a like matching set on. Like I said, I feel so good when I wear my parade underwear, and I want that for you too. Betsy Johnson collab that I am wearing right now is limited edition, so you're gonna wanna hop on Parade's website and snatch that up immediately. And while you're there, if you find anything else you like, you can use my code CHANDLER40 for 40% off. Thanks to Parade for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Now let me briefly run you through the three books I'm going to be reading for this here vlog. First up is perhaps the most exciting pick. It is Bride by Allie Hazelwood. I've seen so much early buzz about Allie Hazelwood's paranormal romance debut, and I am so excited to give this one a try. I am a paranormal romance lover, which if you've been here for any length of time, you may know. So I have high hopes for this one since I love Allie Hazelwood's other stuff. Also going to be reading A Love Song for Ricky Wilde by Tia Williams. I loved Seven Days in June by Tia Williams, which came out quite a few years ago. I want to say it was like 2020, 2021, maybe even before that. And I have been like waiting with bated breath for her next romance release. And this one, it seems like it's going to be interesting. It's got like kind of a fantastical element to it from what I can tell from the prologue and just kind of the way it's described. So excited about this. Um, heroine's a bit of a dreamer, which I think could be either really good or really bad. We'll, we'll see. We shall see. And then lastly, I have, of course, Fangirl Down by Tessa Bailey. This is a golfer romance, which I don't think I've ever read before. I love good sports romance, so I'm curious to see how Tessa is able to make golf sexy. If anyone can do it, it is Tessa. I'm excited to read these books and tell you which ones I think are worth your time. Um, I'm hoping to make this a series here on my channel. I think I mentioned this later on in the video. Uh, spoiler, I actually film the intros to these videos last. I would love to know in the comments down below what your most anticipated March releases are. I already have some ideas on what I'd like to read for this video next month, but I, of course, always welcome your recommendations. So without further ado, let's get into the vlog portion of this video. You ready to talk about some booty eating? <laughs> okay. I decided to start with Fangirl Down by Tessa Bailey, and I do, I think, own a physical copy of this book. I don't know how because I don't believe I purchased it myself, but I also have the audiobook from Libro FM. Shout out Libro for their, like, influencer sort of, like, program because you, if you have, like, a, I think a thousand followers on any sort of, like, social media platform can get access to free audiobooks, basically. I mean, there's like a limited selection every month of like what you can pick from, but uh, it's pretty cool. Anyway, I am 50% into Fangirl Down, and I really didn't know what to expect from this one. I feel like the kind of like early buzz about this, not even buzz, but people were just kind of like dunking on the fact that this book is about a golfer and like what's sexy about golf. And I really wish that this book could beat those accusations, but I'm not gonna lie, like I don't get it. Like I don't, I don't find golf sexy, and this book's really not doing anything to prove to me that it is. Is. So this book's about our two main characters. I don't know either of their names. I don't really care, to be honest. I'm just listening to this while I play two dots on my phone. Let's be, let's be real fucking for real here. But our heroine is a fangirl for this 
this golfer who is kind of down on his luck and she after kind of a series of events becomes his golf caddy and she is going to I guess keep him kind of on the straight and narrow and make sure that he is like at the top of his game she's going to encourage him she is going to be paid for this which is great because her parents own like a golf shop basically like a pro shop kind of situation it has not been really bringing in any money and in fact it just got flooded and she has no flood insurance um, our heroine is running the golf shop her parents are retired but she's caddying so that she can find a way to earn the money to repair the shop he like offered her the money just kind of randomly and she was like yeah I don't take charity but then he offered her to be caddy for him and she was like yay that sounds so great let's do it um so that's kind of what's going on you know they can't fight their sexual attraction for each other and it's just so intense and so sexy. <laughs> I'm honestly glad that I started with this one because I feel like this is the one that I'm like least likely to like of all three of them, which if you would have asked me a few years ago, I would have said would be the complete opposite because you know, Tessa just fucks it up every time. She does fuck it up every time. Sometimes it's a good fuck it up. Sometimes it's not in, in fact a good fuck it up. And this time I think it's kind of like not a great fuck it up. I'm just like really not feeling much for these characters. I mean, I like our heroine well enough. She has type one diabetes and um, her parents parents are a little overbearing and overprotective about that and she just wants to like live her life and not be you know kind of like smothered by her parents but our hero like I don't know even though his like parents don't give a fuck about him he's just like hard to care for he's got that like typical grumpy hero thing going on and I think maybe I'm just like over the grumpy hero I mean I've been over grumpy heroes for a long time but I think it just gets worse as I age one thing I did want to remark upon because I'm not quite there yet but I'm kind of scared to get there is that apparently there is a eat in the booty like groceries kind of scene and it is the heroine getting down and freak nasty with some hairy man ass and here's the thing i think in romance exploring the depth of human sexuality is not necessarily a bad thing however that doesn't necessarily mean that i want to read every possible combination of parts being smashed together it's you know totally personal preference not yuck and yums i know a lot of people are actually very into that part of this book i don't believe that i will be and i probably shouldn't have read reviews before going into this because now i'm just like waiting for that like a fucking jump scare so it's a time i just here's the thing i I don't really feel like this book is romantic and I don't really feel like the relationship building is there. Now I'm trying to compare this to other books by the same author because I feel like that's the most fair comparison you can make, right? With something like It Happened One Summer, yes it's a rom-com, yes it's very sexy, there's like a lot, you know, of sexual tension there and Tessa Bailey is always going to write over the top dirty talk in her books and that's totally fine. I'm like not, you know, opposed to that obviously because I've enjoyed it in her other books. But in It Happened One Summer, I feel like the difference there is that I really feel like our heroine starts in one place and by the end of the book she's a completely different person and not in a bad way like she's changed for the better and it's just really nice to see that character growth and I know that that's not always possible just depending on like what kind of character you are working with like Piper in that book really has a long way to go when it comes to sort of becoming a better person and the heroine in this book she's a good person she's a nice person and I'm sure she'll undergo some sort of growth but I just feel like the romance here isn't really built on anything like I don't really understand the attraction that they have for each other I mean I guess he enjoys the fact that like she's kind of obsessed with him and like a fan but like that's not really a reason to be into someone like he kind of states at the beginning of the book that like you know part of the reason that he's kind of grumpy all the time and like has had a bad time is because no one loves him anymore and like the fair weather fans you know whatever I just feel like the kind of like power dynamics there are a little weird to begin with I mean they're gr both grown adult people so I feel like if they can overcome the fandom aspect of their romance I think that's fine but it just seems like he is into her because she is into him and and that's not sexy to me personally and yeah them like trying to to fuck I'm just like okay like y'all y'all think each other are hot but like that's it like that's just not it's not romantical to me okay it's just not romantical so that's where I'm at with this book um I feel like I'm just sort of bitching at this point and or not really doing a very good job at sort of defining exactly what it is that I'm not vibing with but hopefully once I finish this book I can put it more into words and hopefully it gets better as the book goes on too like maybe it'll be a you know nice solid three star at the moment to be honest this is feeling more two star material it's not egregiously bad or anything but it's just not anything that I'm like wow y'all need to go out and pick this up I'm really just excited to get to bride later tonight I guess I should probably tell you my plan of attack today not that it normally matters for these kinds of vlogs but I just put sunscreen on and I'm putting makeup on the makeup is for this video so you don't have to like look at my ugly bare face but I am about to go and pick up some plants and some soul for plant and shit uh Hayden and I are gonna be doing yard work today and it's good that I have the audiobook so that I can do my yard work while <laughs> I listen to this audiobook but once I get inside and get all clean and cuddly we can read bride by Allie hazelwood which is what we're reading today after this i'm so i'm literally so fucking excited for this book i have not seen one negative review and i love Allie hazelwood so i'm gonna go i'll be back and i'm just 
so excited for that one. We'll finish this one too, you know. Ooh, not me filming this a second time. I'm not good at articulating my feelings and I kind of just like lost track of what I was saying with this book because already so much has happened in the first 50 pages. But we need to talk about Fangirl Down before we can talk about Bride by Ali Hazelwood. So Fangirl Down, what is there to say about this book? I don't want to wax poetic or like go on too long because this is just a fine book. Like I am so frustrated though because I'm so sick of fine books and I don't know if y'all feel the same way but there's no nothing more frustrating to me than a book that is just fine because a book that's bad I can DNF. A book that's bad I can have a lot to say about it and can laugh and can like point at the flaws. A book that's just fine is just tough for me because I'm not getting anything super remarkable out of it. I'm not like swooning, but I'm also not laughing at it either. I don't know. This one, I just feel like the compatibility between hero and heroine, while was certainly there, like they definitely had a sexual chemistry, wasn't anything particularly impressive to me. The hero is really good at supporting the heroine both in her like medical needs, like she has diabetes and he's there and making sure that she is like okay at all times, which is super sweet. He he's there for her in that regard. He's also there to be just a supportive partner, but I don't know that that to me is enough to make a romance good. Kind of like the bar is in hell a little bit to an extent. I think a lot of people would be charmed by the things that the hero does for the heroine, but I just personally felt like there wasn't anything that really brought these two together that wasn't just like basic, like basic, basic, basic. Like, you know, uh, him supporting her business endeavors and like wanting to like be her own person. I don't know. I just feel like that's really baseline for a romantic relationship. And I think with Tessa Bailey, I'm expecting something different. I really, again, I hate to compare to what happened one summer, but with that one, it's like she had something unique that not everyone would like. And and the hero liked that about her. He enjoyed her quirks. He enjoyed her personality traits. This one, I feel like the hero was a little too generic. It just felt, it felt like a, a worse clone, I guess we could say, of like some of Tessa's other stuff. So I don't know. This is one that I'm probably going to give three stars to. Like it was a perfectly fine book, but it, there's just absolutely nothing stand out in it. And I think that's disappointing, particularly because it's clear that she picked a sport that like not a lot of people have done sports romances on before. And she wanted to do something different, but the execution didn't feel very different. It didn't get me more interested in golf. It didn't get me to think, oh, golf players are sexy. I just was kind of bored. It was just kind of boring to me. So <laughs> that sucks. And I just wanted to be like very transparent with y'all about that because this video, like and the series I'm doing in general is really to read stuff I'm excited about, read new releases, and just tell you my general and genuine thoughts and feelings so that you can know if you should go and pick out or pick up a book. Which I guess is sort of the point anyway, but a lot of the times, you know, I'm just making like a, a video with like general books, you know what I mean? Like I just did a list video where I talked about, you know, like the Good Read Choice Award winners. And like that's, I think that's a more like entertaining video perhaps, but I think when it comes to like just taking away knowledge, you're probably going to maybe hopefully take my advice from a video like this more so than maybe one like that. Why am I over explaining this? Wow. As if y'all don't know how the fuck videos work or like what these vi videos, you know, the intent is, but genuinely like that is, that is what I'm trying to get out of these and hopefully like you will get something out of them too. But I digress. Let's talk about Bride by Ellie Hazelwood. This is one that I'm having a hard time figuring out how to talk about because it is kind of a lot even at the beginning of the book. And I think that just comes with the territory of this not being a contemporary romance. It's labeled on the back actually as a paranormal romance. Some people are saying this reads more like in contemporary. I don't disagree, but let me try to explain what this book is. It's challenging because it's kind of completely different than I thought, even reading on the back kind of what it's about. I guess I, I skipped over the outcast kind of part of this situation, but our main character, Misery, is a vampire, and her whole life she's been kind of estranged from her kind, right? Her dad is like head honcho of the vampires, but he ends up sending her out as a, I always forget the word and I always have to look it out, as collateral basically to humans. So humans and vampires have this tentative agreement where they will get along as long as there is collateral. So vampire goes to a human, human goes to a vampire, and they are considered the collateral. And so if anything ever goes wrong, the human that's in the care of the vampires will die or vice versa, right? So there's motivation there for the vampires and the humans to get along. Now, fast forward to today, Misery obviously was collateral. Her dad made her collateral for 10 years. And so that kind of made her estranged from the vampires when she came back. And even before they were like, ew, you're a traitor. Like we don't, we don't like you because you're going to be going to the humans, whatever. Now, fast forward to present day, she's like 25. She is living amongst the humans. She's just trying to kind of live her life. She doesn't have a ton of friends. She has one friend. When her one friend goes missing, she decides that she will agree to this idea that her dad has to unite the vampires and werewolves um, and marry the alpha of the werewolves. There's a new alpha in town. He killed the old alpha, of course, because that's just how werewolf hierarchy works. And he is hot and he's young and he is going to marry our heroine. And she's hoping that by like marrying him, she'll find out some more information about her missing friend. Because I'm assuming that her missing friend was like maybe captured by the werewolves or like has something to do 
with werewolves, I don't really entirely know. Um, but I believe her friend is a human. And again, I guess in this society, like humans, vampires, werewolves, they don't live together in harmony necessarily, but they all know of each other. It's not like vampires or werewolves are secrets. So it's interesting. I have, you know, read the marriage scene in this book. Right now we have Misery kind of living amongst the werewolves and she's just kind of finding out about like how things work and how her life's going to be while she lives with this guy, I guess the rest of the pack. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's still kind of early. Like I don't exactly have a lot of feelings about the romance because the romance isn't really there yet, but I am very much liking the hero and the way he's described. He's described actually very similarly to the hero that I'm writing in my own book, you know, shaved head, green eyes, but I really don't know how to feel about this. Like I am excited to see how Ali Hazelwood handles a paranormal romance. I was excited before going into this and curious before going into this, but now I feel like I'm even more curious. The one thing I can say is that I am intrigued to see, I guess, how this idea of like loneliness and maybe like being an outcast comes into play. Like, will our heroine feel accepted by the werewolves eventually? Will she feel accepted by her husband specifically? Will their marriage actually create a lasting, I guess, truce between the werewolves and the vampires? I'm just very curious to see that. And it's interesting too, just the way the vampires are kind of set up in this book. They're, they're not killed by the sun. They're not immortal, but they do only drink blood. They don't eat food. They, I guess, are typically rather wealthy. They live in these like high rises and our heroine, I guess, isn't really on board with that. So yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. My goal at this point is to get to the 50% mark. Uh, it's longer than I expected. So get to page like 200 and update you again. And then tomorrow we can finish this one off, but it's not really what I expected, but not in a bad way. And also, of course, I'm very curious to see how, how the romance evolves and like what kind of guy he is, you know, because he's supposed to be this werewolf who's like aggressive and grumpy, but will he be? I don't know. Stay tuned. We'll figure it out together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is everything. This is everything to me. It's everything that I needed and wanted. First things first, I do want to point out that this does read like a contemporary, which is not a bad thing. It doesn't really feel like a true paranormal romance to me, but it does have the hallmarks of paranormal that I just sometimes forget how much I miss. I really cut my teeth from a young age on paranormal romance. Like that is how I got into romance in the first place. So anything that feels familiar like that, I love. I think technically this is supposed to be like light omega verse, but this really just feels like a contemporary with like like paranormal elements to me. I don't really know what an Omegaverse novel feels like. I think I've only read one and I didn't even finish it. So I'm not like the authority on that. So I won't really be speaking to that when I talk about this book, but I don't want to spoil the plot of this book. Obviously I'm not going to like spoil, well, spoil the plot of a book. I don't believe in spoiling the plot of the books. As in, I don't think that's a thing, but I won't spoil, you know, like the main threads of the story, but our heroine is helping our hero with a like pack related matter. That's kind of like the general gist of the story. And I think he's going to maybe help her find her best friend. That hasn't really been explicitly discussed yet. She is just definitely helping him. And as a part of that, there is a scene where he has to like scent mark her. Oh boy. I liked that a lot. I thought that was really like hot and fun and just like everything that I love. It's so interesting to me because in my everyday life, I am not someone who believes in the one or soulmates or anything like that, but I love it in romance. I think it's like a fun concept for sure. This idea of like mates and like there being just one person meant for you and how, you know, I love the whole faded mates trope. It's just so delicious, you know, especially when it's not someone you're already with and you like discover your mates when it's someone that you don't like and you discover your mates. I think that's even more fun and juicy and it honestly kind of gives like fake dating vibes in a sense, like in a paranormal sense. Not that that really comes into play necessarily in this book. I am eating this up. I also really like Anna, who is our hero Lo's little sister. She is so funny and I like the relationship that she and Misery have. I think it's super precious. Misery's like, I don't even like kids, but she does her best to like be a good, I don't want to say role model or like friend, but kind of to this little girl who's like seven, which I think is so sweet. Yeah, it feels very cozy and, and slice of life, which I'm really appreciating. I don't know much the plot is going to come into play here or if it's going to be important. It seems like it's going to be fairly minor, I'm assuming, but who freaking knows? I am just genuinely like very here for this. I'm loving the conversations that are being had too between Lo and Misery. Like they finally kind of gotten into the same spaces and like they have reason to cross paths because again, they're like helping each other with things and it's just so, so goddamn good. I was going to say ju juicy. It's juicy. It is. I mean, it's, it's exactly what I needed. It's not what I wanted necessarily because I don't think I really knew what I wanted going into this because I heard Ally Hazelwood paranormal huh but yeah it feels like if Ally Hazelwood wrote a paranormal romance so I think if you like her writing and you like a fantasy romance or you like just like I don't know elements like soft elements of paranormal in your romance I think you would enjoy this um I think this could appeal to like a lot of people frankly I mean obviously if you're looking for like a high fantasy romance like Sarah J Mass style this probably isn't gonna scratch that itch but otherwise good lord I have had such a good time and I'm like dying to see what happens and like I don't really want to know what 
nodding is, but I'm assuming I'm gonna find out. And uh, yeah, also I'm wondering, I think her heroine might be a virgin, which I think is interesting. I don't think that Allie Hazelwood has done that in any of her other books, but also I just like, anytime I have a physical book with me, like I get obnoxious with it. So I'm so sorry, but I'm gonna finish this. Maybe not tonight, but like early in the morning. That is my favorite time to finish books, by the way. If you're wondering what my, well, my reading routine looks like, I typically read early in the morning and late at night um, if I'm gonna read physically. And then if I'm listening to an audiobook, it's throughout the day. So that's how I do it. How do you do it? Let me know in the comments. I'm gonna go read my smut. Bye. Hello friends, happy Thursday. I am in my car. I just had lunch and I am nice and clean. I finally like washed my hair after doing yard work yesterday. And while the sun is beautiful and I would actually really like to be outside, I'm going to soak up the sunshine from indoors today and finish reading books for this vlog. You know, the things I do for you. So I finished Bride and I also got 20-ish percent into Love Song for Ricky Wild, which we can talk about. All right, so let's start with Bride. I loved this book. I genuinely think that this is, I don't want to say one of Allie Hazelwood's best books, but I really liked Misery, I think, more than any of Ali Hazelwood's other heroines, which I think says a lot. I think that because this was told in kind of like a fantasy-ish way, it wasn't told in a fantasy way, it was told in a contemporary way, but because there were fantastical elements, I think that Misery's actions and kind of her personality, it's less quirky, it's less irritating to me. As much as I appreciate that Ali Hazelwood typically writes steminist literature, I also liked that there wasn't a lot of like emphasis on science and technology, I guess besides the fact that our heroine was like a hacker but generally speaking i really liked misery and something that i think i've conveniently forgotten to like point out in the past couple of clips is that the fact that she is lonely and doesn't have a lot of friends and feels like an outcast from society like really is such an integral part of her personality and of the overall message of this book and i really love a good found family story which is really i think ultimately what this book is so that's something that i really really liked and while i didn't love the the nodding and the like maybe mild omegaverse elements of this book i did actually like seeing what Allie did with the paranormal elements. I don't know, it was just fun. I feel like I should have more to say, and I feel like as I was reading this book, there were so many little things that just stood out to me as things that I personally really enjoyed, but I think my overall recommendation for this book is that if you're someone who really likes contemporary and maybe also dabbles in like some Sarah J Mass sort of like romancy, I think you'd really like this. Not that this is in any way similar to that, but I think there's just enough fantasy in here to keep people excited if they are maybe a romancy reader, but not so much fantasy that a romance reader would enjoy it like a contemporary romance reader i should say so i really liked this i really hope that she writes more books that have a sort of like fantasy spin honestly i would like a, a full-on romance book from miss ellie hazelwood i think she would like really excel at it but yeah i liked it um as you're reading a book that has been already so widely loved and reviewed by people it's interesting to see like kind of where your own opinions like stand and one thing i did want to i don't want to say fight back against was i saw a couple of people saying they didn't like the third act conflict in this book and i'm not going to spoil what that is but it actually didn't bother me so much and it's interesting that it bothered other people considering how much people like Emily Henry books. I am pretty sensitive I would say to their debt conflicts that arise out of a character saying some things that they don't mean. I feel like that can really easily turn a relationship sour like even if you get back together if you've said some shit you can't take back I think that could be a problem but the things that are said in this one I think are self-preservation and I think that's very clear to both characters when the words are said so it didn't bother me so much. That's like the really the only other thing that I wanted to like point out but y'all this book was so fun and there's just something about Ellie Hazelwood's writing that is so page turning and fun like regardless of what she's writing and uh yeah I will follow her anywhere you know I'm very excited too for the contemporary one that's coming out from her later this year I'll probably read that one for a video like this as well like a new release sort of romance vlog but let's talk about a love song for you wild <sighs> boy okay so I have the physical copy of this book I obviously also have the physical copy of Bride I just didn't bring either of them with me but with this book I tried to read it physically and after a chapter it just, something just wasn't really clicking with me and wasn't connecting and I thought maybe that like someone narrating the story would work better and it has so I picked up the audiobook of this even though I own the physical copy which greatly pained me I really fucking hate spending money on audiobooks in the first place and I also really don't like buying the audiobook if I already have a physical copy but it just felt necessary this time so I would say if you're gonna pick up this book I would definitely pick it up on audio the main character Ricky is 28 and she is kind of living in the shadow of her family she was a surprise baby and her three elder sisters don't really seem to have a lot of like love for her she's not close with them and as a result, I think she's kind of like retreated into herself and doesn't really 
connect with a lot of people in general. Like, she's kind of dating this guy, kind of sleeping with this guy, but she doesn't feel any real connection to him. And he's definitely painted as this guy who's, like, kind of a clown and uh, a little bit too into his, like, woo-woo, like, crystal stuff. I'm not saying that everybody that likes crystals is, like, the same kind of person, but y'all know the stereotype that I'm talking about, I think. That's, like, the only person that she really has in her life. Uh, basically, she pitches to her family this idea that she wants to open up her own flower shop, and they're kind of against this because she's sort of this, like, flaky, flighty person in their eyes, and everybody else has, like, a branch or, like, a different location of the family funeral home business. Like, all of the sisters own their own branches of the, like, father's funeral home, I guess. It's a family business, and since she doesn't want to go into that, they're, like, not super impressed by her and her ideas, even though she's, like, very successful on Instagram with her, like, floral arranging. So she decides she's gonna strike out on her own, and she gets this really incredible deal after talking to someone when she is a receptionist at the funeral home, I believe. This person is like, hey, move to Harlem, and you can live in the, like, studio apartment attached to my home, and you can also, like, have your shop be in the front of my home, basically, or, like, in the front of the apartment. I don't know. There's a storefront there. And so she is able to get pretty cheap rent, and she is able to open up this business, and she's running into issues along the way because her creations are very, like, exotic, using a lot of exotic flowers, which are pretty expensive to import, and so she's not making the profit she wants to make. She is, she's existing, and she's making friends kind of along the way, which is nice to kind of, like, see her get to, I guess, break out of the bubble she's been in, in a sense. And I feel like, in some ways, this is, has some parallels with Bride, which I think is, um, interesting. And I also, I have to say, I'm finding, in reading these two books, that I really enjoy that trope. The sort of, like, outcast trope, the I don't fit in anywhere, because I think it's something that almost all of us can relate to. At one point or another in our lives, we haven't felt accepted or embraced for maybe who we are or what we enjoy. And so, I, I think I, I feel like that's a, a quick way to get me to care about a character. So, rooting for Ricky, excited to kind of see where her story goes. And then, interspersed, we have these chapters from the Harlem Renaissance, which is so cool. Our main character, Breeze, in that timeline, I, I don't, hmm. I don't want to spoil anything, I, but I think I think there's sort of like some magic going on here. And there, at the beginning of the book, in the prologue, it says there might be magic afoot. But I don't know where he used to live. But he had kind of a hard life, and now he is visiting his friend in Harlem and trying to like kind of make a name for himself in the music industry. He is a piano player, and he kind of plays amongst the greats and like starts making a name for himself. Those chapters are interspersed, and what I'm thinking is going to happen, and I don't know this for sure, but I'm pretty sure, is that she is going to meet Breeze. And I don't know how Ricky's going to meet Breeze, but I'm assuming that their chapters are interspersed for that reason or maybe we'll see Breeze fall in love and there will be a connection to Ricky's in real life, like, present day love. I don't know. I don't know, but I'm liking it. Like, I like both elements of the story. It's not perfect by any means. I will say the writing style, it's not inaccessible by any means, but it's definitely very particular and there's a lot of, like, pop culture references and it feels a little, like, stiff at times. So I think that you might have to work a little harder, I think, to get into this book. It doesn't feel as, like, breezy, I think, maybe as Seven Days in June did. But honestly, now that I think about it, I don't know if I physically read that one or if I listened to the audio book. So maybe I did listen to the audio of that one and that's why this one is connecting so much for me. But this is one that like, I'm just curious about, you know, it's been a while since I've read a T.M. Williams book and I love Seven Days in June. It's one of my favorite romances. So yeah, I'm curious to see how this one shakes out. And I think it's an interesting contrast to maybe some of the other things that we have read. This is such an interesting video. I love doing things like this. And I feel like it's been a while since I've just like gotten to read romance in this way. And I feel like I shouldn't remark upon that so often and or like talk about why I'm making this video. But yeah, it's just making me kind of reflective, I guess. I'm like, well, the things I want to be making here and on my vlog channel and um yeah i'm just i'm having a good time with it and i'm so excited to finish this one and like give you my final thoughts and i just like the idea of like you know reading romances that release in a certain month and just telling you like hey i read all of them i read all the popular stuff oh that being said before i forget because i inevitably will in the comments i would love to know what march releases y'all are excited about i have a few that are on my radar but i especially would love some like indie romance recommendations that are releasing in march so i can add them to my video i would love to do like longer versions of this video in future. Three books minimum for sure, but like I would love to be doing like five, maybe ten book versions of these. I don't know. Maybe that would be overwhelming, but I just want to tell you what's hot, what's fresh, what's new, what's good. All right, I'm gonna go. I need to go. <laughs> I need to go home and uh, we'll read some more books. It'll be fun. It'll be cozy. It'll be a good time. Y'all, it has been a journey to get here. Uh, I filmed a midway point clip and an end clip for A Love Song Freaky Wild and my SD card and my camera just decided to break in that process. So I'm filming on my vlog camera for my other channel, which is fine. Um, what's not as fine is the fact that like you couldn't see how my opinion changed from the 50% mark clip to the end clip. I feel like that's always how it goes. It's always when I lose footage. It's like juicy. So when I got to the 50% mark of this book, let me try to relay my thoughts and feelings. When I got to the 50% mark of this book, listening to it via audio, I was 
really um, <laughs> not into it. I'm not gonna lie to you. The Harlem Renaissance chapters kind of faded into the background. Like, I didn't really get as many of those for good reason. As the story goes on, it kind of makes sense as to why that happens. But the most interesting parts of the book are the Harlem Renaissance, like, 1920s chapters. So to have so much of the book focused on Ricky was not the most exciting heroine, in my humble opinion. It wasn't my favorite up until that point. I was getting bored. I was like, okay, when's her love interest gonna come in? Like, what's going on? And then the 50% mark hits and things totally change. So we sort of start to understand why we're getting those Harlem Renaissance chapters and that maybe there is a sort of like time traveling element involved to the story kind of. And I don't think that's a spoiler to say. I think it's pretty obvious from the way that the jacket flap and also the prologue of this book, there's going to be some sort of like magical elements afoot. But this does in some ways remind me of Seven Days, no, The Seven Year Slip <laughs> by Ashley Poston. So that could either work for you or, or it could not. I think like maybe you like a magical element. I think this could work for you. I think my thing with this book, just generally speaking, is that it feels a little women's fiction, like using time travel as a way to like connect wayward characters. I don't know. It just feels, it feels very women's fictiony to me. I feel like the romance was not the center of this book. If you ask me like what the central thread is, I would say romance, but it, it doesn't feel like a well- developed romance, okay? I think if you've read Seven Days in June, you might understand what I'm talking about. Soulmate deep connection that they're trying to like prove throughout the story. I think that's present here, but I think the reason it didn't work as well for me here and the reason why this doesn't feel quite as romantic is because in Seven Days in June, there is this sort of like second chance element to the story to where it does feel a little bit like, would this really happen in real life? Like, would you spend seven days with someone when you're a high schooler and then reunite later on and like still be compatible? Like, I don't know if that's something that's like necessarily true, but I could suspend my disbelief to an extent. Whereas in this book, it's like, I don't think the magical elements could really explain away the lack of relationship development, if that makes sense. Again, there is a romance at the center of this book, but there's so much other stuff going on that it just doesn't feel like a romance. But that being said, it's not that I didn't like this book. It's not that I don't recommend this book. I think if you like women's fiction, you want to learn about the Harlem Renaissance, you want a story that feels uh, kind of dreamy, I feel like kind of summery, I think this would be a good one. But I just don't know that I would recommend it if you're looking for a traditional contemporary romance. This definitely isn't that, but it does have a romantic thread to it. So I don't know if any of that made sense. But the 50% mark, I was bored. Then things got interesting. And by the end of the book, I was like, I just don't know what to think because I don't know that our characters underwent like a ton of growth or that there was a lot of like witty banter or like fun moments between the two of them, but they obviously had a connection. There's some like interesting sacrifices too made by some of the side characters. It's an, it's an interesting book. I think interesting is the best way to describe this. And I think like if I were to rate this one, it'd be three stars. Um, and I might go on Goodreads and rate this three stars, which is disappointing considering that I gave the first book that I read by this author five stars. But like I said, it wasn't, it wasn't a bad one. So it's such an interesting mixed bag that we had for this video. I feel like Fangirl Down was okay. Like not the best book that I've ever read. Definitely didn't do much to prove to me that golfers are sexy. But but if you relate Tessa Bailey and like you have to read all of her backlist and you just want to read all of her releases, like maybe it would be worth your time. Bride, obviously, by Miss Allie Hazelwood, I thought was so fun for both like fantasy lovers and contemporary lovers alike. It had everything that I'm looking for in a good romance. And I loved the heroine. Like I loved the fact that she had this like, I don't want to say outcast sort of thing, but she was just a, a character who I could like and relate to in some ways. And then a love song for Ricky Wilde. Well, it wasn't like my perfect romance. It was good. And it was interesting. I'm, I'm glad I gave this one a chance. And I'll be interested to see like as more people read this book what they think about it. Yeah, an interesting, an interesting February release video. As I said before, I would love to know in the comments down below, not only actually books you're excited about for March, but also what romances you're excited about for the rest of the year. I would love to add those to my TBR and maybe one of your choices will show up in one of these like new release uh, reading vlogs. But thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you had as much fun with it as I did. I love y'all so much and I'll see you next time.